We'll give her one more little push. Okay. We'll call that 400 and torque. Hey everybody, Matt here, Hollywood's Garage. My latest videos on this truck, um, if you've been following along, you know the rear is about three, four inches lower than the front. This puppy is squatting. Right now it's not because my driveway's got a bit of a decline on it, but uh, you don't really notice it up front, but when you're from a distance, you notice it. She's squatting, and I mean, let's be honest. These lift blocks I added are what, three inch? So we only lifted the rear three inch. And like I said, from the previous one is, I'm still missing uh, one leaf spring because it's also like an Adelie leaf, but that got messed up in the mail. There is another set coming. I don't want to wait. I don't think I'll need to add a leaf, um, but at least I'll have it when it shows up. But in the meantime, I did pick up a five inch, I think ready lift, or what is this thing? I think it's ready lift, five inch lift block with new U-bolts. This is designed for the overload spring, if I wanted to keep it on, which I still have. Remember, I took it off, but I still have it. Um, I don't think I'll need the overload. I mean, the reason why I got that so I can add, I also bought a one inch lift block. So total between the two, it'll be six inch and I'll remove the rough country one, obviously, because that's only a three inch. I mean, you're not supposed to triple stack, because obviously we have you double stack in the factory block in the rough country one. But I'm not really gonna haul this truck. I mean, it'll be fine. She's literally a highway princess. Later on, I'm gonna end up getting proper, uh, like a proper six inch block, just or even more like a, if I can get rid of the factory one too, like a 10 inch block or something, right? Whatever it's gonna need. But for now, let's just get rid of the squad look because I hate it. I'm not a big fan of it. Um, embarrassing driving the truck around like that. So let's get that going. So I have it backed in because my driver is on a decline, as you can see. And obviously, with the back end off the ground to do the, um, the blocks, you can't stop the front end from rolling down the hill. So we got her backed in on some level ground. We're going to jack it up on the axle. That way we could take the rear tires off and just give us more room around. We don't have to, but it just give us more room. Plus I can check to see if one of the um, adapter bolts or nuts, sorry, ended up, I'll check one, I'll see if it loosened. We'll check the torque on it, if it's still good. We can assume the rest are good. Um, if not, well, we'll have to retorque them all, even though they have Loctite on them. So I just want, it's just a triple check, right? So we'll check one while we have it off. But let me get uh, this up in the air. I'll get one tire off, we'll do the one side here. And then uh, the other side should be the same thing, right? So also in this video, I did get the uh, the bushings, the kryptonite bushings, a two degree, I guess, caster. So that will hopefully get that front end from being like this and more like this. So it's, it's got more of a leading axle than a straight up and down. Hopefully fix some of that coil bind since I add the leveling kit to it which I've added since the six inch video, six inch lift video, I added a two inch spacer because of my offsets for rubbing. They still rub a little bit, but way better than before. Okay, ADHD, Whew. let's get this back of this truck lifted up. There, as you can see, we got our lower down. So let's um, take, undo these U-bolts. We'll have the uh, spacer ready, we'll swap it out. Keep in mind the taper. We'll add that one inch in there as well. We'll probably do the one inch, then the uh, five inch and then that. Cause I think the one inch is not a taper. I think it's more of a leveling one, but regardless, we'll um, start unbolting here got her undone so the new lift block i bought doesn't really look like it tapers but i don't know it's an optical illusion i measured it it looked the same 
but you can see the rough country one is tapered so anywho so that's the difference we're gonna gain two inches with just with this and then we'll add that one inch to it so now we should in theory have a six inch lift in the back eight in the front should be level and I said if we're a little lower I do have that add leaf that goes in between the bottom and this one here when that shows up so and if you watched my previous video you'll see that I kept this spacer on which is where your overload went on so I'm going to see how long these u-bolts are if they're long enough I'll leave it if not I'm going to have to <clears throat> um use the hardware that came with the kit which is i wanted to use grade a because they don't rust where the, no, the kit comes with like in the new black metal ones which will rust but they're shorter they're all threaded so it'll fit better this is mine they're only threaded for so long that's the reason why i had to keep the block in there um but we'll see where we're at here like let's grab one of the new ones here let's just see yeah like right now we've only gained about an inch of hang there we still have quite a bit overhang, so I don't know. Because we won't know until I get that spaced out. We'll see. Hopefully you can see. But what I'm finding is this hole is quite rust jacked. So I had to clean it quite a bit out with the screwdriver, screwdriver already. Because the nubs on these lift blocks are quite tall, right? So just get a flathead, twist it, pry it, get it cleaned out. You want your lift blocks laying flat. You can see all the rust in there. But um you can get a vacuum out or just wire brush it off but yeah just keep that keep that in mind you want a nice flat surface you don't want any you know big you don't want any pieces because it'll what happens is it'll over time it'll crunch meanwhile you've torqued to that and now you'll have space because that crunch will slowly pulverize and turn the powder and then you'll have some space so just keep that in mind got her what i had to do was get the biggest drill bit i had yes it's meant for wood but just kind of go in there and little bit of honing out here and there without getting into the metal just getting that rust jack but we are flush so in theory that'll go on and then we'll still have to put the factory one in so we'll have to lower the um, axle more just keep in mind your lines look how tight that one is so i'm going to take the bolt out of the spacer that i made holding that up just to give some slack on it she's pretty tight as you can see um I might even have to undo it from here and have it hang and just maybe keep it on this one because she's uh she's taut so i'll undo this i'll undo that and i'll bring you guys back and see if that makes enough space so what i actually did was remove this bracket remove this one so maybe later on i'll just put this one back in and have that droop taken out of there but put the stock bolts back in the stock holes just for now left these on probably end up using this one again but any hoose, we have lots of slack now. So now I can drop it more. We can put the factory one in there and then we'll see if the U-bolts are long enough for this. And if not, we'll have to take it all apart, the leaf pack, put in the new bolt that's an all thread style and then get rid of that. So got it stacked, this is where we're at. So even if we remove that spacer on top there where the, I guess that block right there, we're still not gonna have enough thread, I don't think. Cause you want at least two through the top of the nut so as much as i hate to do it i'll take the one inch out we'll try that and later on we'll have to add that add a leaf in which is like the same thickness as one of these uh like the second one from the bottom there so if we take out that one inch they'll give us above there well i haven't tried it yet but it should get us above we'll see where it sits if we take the one inch out and it looks like it'll fit we'll do that so i still have to grind a little bit to get that to sit flush i don't know if i can see it the space there the, uh, the nub on the bottom it's a little big so i've been grinding it down just in a circle but i think we'll have her uh yes um there's only about five threads that goes through if i see the space between the axle tube and the u-bolt i think when we tighten it down we'll sink it in we'll be okay plus if i get rid of that you know four millimeter space should be okay so let me grind that down a bit more we'll uh yeah i can see it down there bring her back up and we'll squeeze her together so this is where we're at. The new hardware is way nicer on the uh, super lift brand stuff, thicker. But as you can see, since it's thicker, we're not all the way through. The back ones are even a little worse. So we're gonna have to take this block out. It is what it is. So C-clamp on one side, brass strap on the other, because that's what I have. I don't have two C-clamps. We'll uh, drop this, lower it, undo it, 
we'll put the other bolt in. It won't be that bad. It's just a little extra step, but just to be safe, I'm just, that'll probably be fine in the long run, but if we're gonna be adding that out of leaf, we're gonna be taking that off anyway, that block. So let's just, uh, let's just get rid of it. So that's what you're left with. Um, the box, the big, the box came with two different size uh, bolts. Use the size that fits, obviously. Um, it also, one won't have a head that'll fit in the stock hole. Use that one for reference, so I'd use a smaller one. It's extra long, so they say cut it where you want, or you can leave it if you want, but I'm gonna cut it about an inch high. You know, an inch high, so when I do an idle leaf or something, um, I'll have space for it, um, as you can see. So, when I'm letting my battery charge for my drill, I have to drill that a little bigger for the bigger nut that they supply the bigger bolt so i'll uh while that's charging i'm going to take my zip disc cut it so i'm about an inch high there and then come back and finish drilling that and we should be able to place it together actually i'm going to wire wheel this quickly or just wire brush it and paint it too i kind of painted the factory block to you know spruce it up while we're in here well good news we were able to keep the one inch in there so as you can see we're flush to all the tops these are longer nuts than the ones that though at the um you can see there quite a bit taller uh so yeah these are longer nuts sure they're not nylon but longer is more grip which has better pull on that stud so long as they're torque which is like 150 foot pounds double check that though don't go off what i'm saying i use ugga duggas that's 400 foot pounds so very good they're nice and tight i don't like how they're not the tightest around here they're meant for this truck but I don't know. Maybe that'll. Let's just see here. Yeah, they're a little. I don't know. They're. They're the same. Pretty freaking close, anyway. So I think we'll be okay. They're tight. Um, of course, I'll go back on with a wrench or an ugga dugga. You know a few hundred kilometers and tighten up i ended up buying a i ended up buying a lifted like 14 one ton dodge ram and i bought it on the way to like the in-laws um <clears throat> drove it to the in-laws which is like an eight hour drive drove it back home and i felt and something was jiggling as i was driving i'm like what the heck right get it home and i'm looking it over and the freaking these were all loose they were all like loose like a like a quarter inch on each of those i could tighten them up so if you're worried about them loose and not uh, and having issues, you kind of, I mean, I proved it, you're fine. The truck, tighten them up or we're good. But uh, I just don't know if they just didn't <clears throat> tighten them properly or over time it settled because somebody had like dirt or something and it, like I said, it or rust and it just kind of crumbled out and loosened up. But uh, yeah, there we go. This side is now done. So what I'm gonna do is figure this out now, this clamp, this uh, brake right here, or even this. Well, I want to keep that up. I could even bring this down to here. I wonder if I can bring it down, share it, bend it, and put it into the, put it into like this one here, right? Yeah. Okay, I'll get rid of that one. I'll see if I can bring this one down into here. Well, no, it's not going to fit. You can see it's only so big. That's a lot, and that's a lot of bending to try to make that bigger. But if I could tuck it on the inside, it should hold it in, right? So. Okay, I'll bring you back when I got this side all figured out. This is what I ended up with for cable management. Got rid of that black bracket that used to go to this when it was factory height. Ended up bending this bracket down just to give it a little more like less of a loop. This one bent a little bit. This one I ended up keeping, but it's loose enough. I got rid of this bracket. I'm just gonna unbend this to take it off. It was bolted so it would hide higher up, but it gives it lots of slack now and it can slide in there. So we're good that way. So now we're gonna, I'll finish taking that off and then We'll jump the other side and now that we know what we're doing it'll be just quicker i'll bring you back when that one's all finished got this one done looking good the only thing i don't like is with these five inch super lift spacers is that really tapered neither is the one inch it's just a factory block um might be but the pinion angle's not the best i'd like a little more tilted up if i could but we'll see how she plays out there it's not too bad to be honest so okay so one thing to be aware of when doing this obviously is you need super tall jack stands i am at the 610 jack stands hiked all the way up on the hitch and 
I had to play some finagling. I had to put like my other jack stand sitting here on both sides so I could get it raised enough to get the jack out from the pumpkin so I could drop it enough to do this other side. It was a mess. But um, let's go ahead and like I said, we'll torque. We'll try to torque one of these. I set them at 165 or 170. I think I went 170, factory's 165. We'll go to 160. If it doesn't budge, we'll try 165. If it doesn't budge, we'll leave it. We'll do one per side, just, just pick one. I'll put my lever in so that way we have something to push against. And hopefully these are good. I do have the, um, the brake on, so this should work. There's a random one. I have it set to 160. Okay. Because I had a torque to 170. Let's just go 165, which is factory torque. Just push nice and slow. Okay, we are good. I don't want to mess around on the uh, Loctite if we don't have to. Let's go to this side. Put you on the stool. Bit of an angle on her. Ooh, ooh, tripping over my own junk. Come on. She's a tight fit. This is 165. We are good. Awesome. Okay, let me clean up my mess. Put my wheels on. Let's see how this thing sits. Should be good now. Boom. Truck's turned around. It's another day. It's brighter out. Is it though? I don't know. Anywho, first thing we're going to do um, before we take tires off and jack stands is we're going to tighten the uh, track bar. Um, this bolt right here. See my finger there? Track bar? Track bar, yeah. That's supposed to be 400 foot pounds. So I got a bit of a clunking on uneven surfaces and whatnot. So I already have it as tight as I could using my half inch drive. We're going to use it with an extension off my jack handle. Put some more torque to that. I'm probably 350-ish, but I feel like either the holes on the bracket are too big or the track bar itself, the bushing is too big for the factory bolt. Maybe in the long run, the guy should actually take it apart and see, see what's actually loose and what's shaking back and forth and then get a bigger bolt something that'll fit better but regardless let's just give this all the beans with my extension handle see how, how much we get out of it we'll give her one more little push call that 400 and torque by 400 i mean i blew my lower third disc so i ran around 400 foot pounds next let's get this truck up on jack stands the front end just on the axle you don't have to take the wheels off look how much more room you're going to gain though just for swinging a hammer and stuff obviously the brake line we might have to just loosen it to get out of the way um, but we'll see we'll see what i can get to here and then uh, we'll also fix my mud flap a little bit of rub in there, so we'll figure something out. What I can do here, it's just this side. It's almost peeled out even from all the rubbing I've been doing. Yeah, first of all, let's just get it off. Jack sounds will get these tires off. Now with that off, we'll take out this cotter pin here, tip my finger. We'll get this castle nut loose up to the point where it's flat with this. Then you hit this with a hammer, pry bar underneath this bushing. Um, she might be a little rusty and there might be worth doing like some kind of penetration oil, you know, a couple days prior. I didn't, so let's see what happens, but then we'll just pop this out the top, put the new one in. But before we get there, we'll, we'll get it loose here. Some pliers, we'll get this nut up. Socket size, a 30 millimeter. Shouldn't be super tight, you know, so once you break it, you just do it by hand. My threads are pretty clean that way, so. We don't want to damage thread, so we'll leave it like that. You put the hit this with a hammer and then pry bar kind of pulling up on that. Let's see if I can get a good view for you guys here while I do it. Pops up like that. 
that actually wasn't too bad. Some guys do it without even the pry bar, just hitting it, it kind of shocks it out. So they had us a flat spot, was to the side of the truck. Oh, gotta watch my rubber hose there. So close. Maybe some channel locks. Huh. This is backside, I can't really get to it. There we go. Maybe try pushing, oh, that's why. <laughs> Duh, I just gotta push, get the weight off of it. And then you gotta make sure that the slit, ooh, turn you. the slit is to the back of the truck. Hmm, why is that being so difficult? She's a tight fit, like it's loose. Like it's still pretty loose inside, so. I don't know, I don't wanna bang it up anymore. Maybe I'll try pulling it out and seeing what's going on. Yes, sir, got it on there. I ended up using a piece of wood and hitting it so I had more space. You could see that it was still hitting a little bit there. What I ended up doing was, um, where'd it go? Taking the factory bushing, putting it like that, and then obviously you can see where it broke by hitting it, but it did go down nice and easy. Actually breaking it helped because it made clearance for the spring. So I'll use that on the next one too. So I only have one broken one if I ever go back to stock. Not that I plan on it, but uh, I don't have wrenches big enough for this. Just a socket. But there isn't much room as you can see. So I've been using channel locks to tighten it or loosen it or whatever. As you can see here. So you gotta do what you gotta do to get by. You don't have every tool under the sun at your disposal. Is it the right thing? No. Another thing to notice is when you go to hammer this in the bushing, make sure it's squared up. I'm not perfectly square. I'm a little turned, but um, it's not gonna affect the degrees too much. So this is a two degree bushing, these two degrees bushing. So when you put a leveling kit on, a two inch or above, like a two inch, two inch and a half, you lose one degree of caster, I think it is. So with this, putting this on, even without a leveling kit, they recommend putting these on because it helps with um, death wobble. But now, since I have the factory, or not factory, but a six inch actual lift kit, Rough Country makes it so you can use all the factory stuff to drop it down. But the problem is, is when I put the leveling kit on, the bottom needs to be extended about you know quarter inch to half an inch. And that's why we have this twist in this because the, the whole axle's got to go forward about, I don't know, half an inch, right? So with this, I'm thinking it could help. If not, it'll help with, at least with, um, you know, bump steer, death wobble. In the long run, I'll be getting a proper four link front system or uh, longer radius arms. I wouldn't mind getting a striker kit, doing the striker eight inch up to the eight inch lift and getting a whole nice like drop bracket and stuff but that's a that's not a this year endeavor you know guys spends only wants to spend so much money type thing a year right so um that's where we're at i'll probably give that a few as much some stunts as i can but let me get this all buttoned up here and we'll go to the other side and hopefully i learned from this our first one the other side will be smoother we'll put the wheels back on We'll torque them. We'll retorque the back since we had those off. I've driven since then, so we can retorque those and we'll fix these mud flaps. Figure out what we can do better here because I rub a lot on the right hand, especially right hand turns. I'm even rubbing the kickback part. So. so I think this is the factory ball joint. This is super rusty, this cotter pin. And like the head doesn't stick through. This is going to be a fun one to try to get out. Um, you can see how rusty it is. It's just. I don't think it's ever been taken apart. The other side of the slot on, oh, this one, mm, just a hole. The other one has a slot on the top probably to help the screwdriver from turning whatever when you're mounting it, but uh, this one's gonna be fun. I don't think it's ever been taken out. Did a pressure wash a little better. Yeah, that's gnarly. So I have to figure out how to get that out of there. Cause like that head is jammed right in there. There, I'm finally getting it. Let me get the light better for you guys over here. I had to smash it out again and bring it, kind of square it up and 
tap hammering again. There. Boom. So the other problem I'm having now is I gouged up a little bit on this one thread and the sucker just wants to spin. So uh, I put a little slot on the top of the grinder, but uh, we'll see here. See, it gets hung up there. But the nice part is I can put something in that hole now. And if I have to, I'll just cut it flat again. It's just one thread that got bunged up. So let me see here. If I put something in there, I want to break my tools though. See if I can impact that on or wrench it on or something. I was able to drive her home. Nothing little ugga duggas can't fix. Now let's get this cotter pin in. Cotter pinned in, these are both done now. Did it fix the issue that I wanted? Straightening that out? Yeah, you probably won't know until you do a drive, but honestly, I think the only way to fix that is proper radius arms, but that's a future me problem. This will be better for riding. Help with bumps or stuff like that. Okay, now let's figure out these mud flaps, what we're gonna do. Specifically this passenger side one. This one just always hits. And I have it up as high as I can. Oh, sorry, I could probably bring it up another half an inch. Maybe we'll try that. You can see where it's rubbing on. It might even be snagging this every time, which is why it's kind of ripping out a bit too, but I had one there, which is no bueno, right where the tire went. There we go. This one could probably go up another, I don't know, quarter inch if you look at that gap. Not really worth putting a bunch of more holes in this like I already have, so we'll leave it there. Nice and sturdy. This one I raise right up to the top. So this one never really rubbed as bad as the other one anyway, so we'll see, uh, we'll see what we get now. You gotta love 14 wides, an inch and a half adapter, pain in the butt, man. If these adapters weren't on it, I'd be fine. With the with the two inch level on top of the six inch, so. Which is not really what I wanted to do to begin with. Is, you know, six inch within two inch spacer, but like I said, that's a future me uh, problem. I gotta be able to figure out um, some radius arms. But um, yeah, so you saw me snug up the drag link. Again, 400 foot pounds, like that you gotta, reef on that thing your normal half inch ratchet is not going to cut it you're gonna need something big um is that three quarter inch i think i have um let me just double check yeah it's a three quarter inch with like a two foot ratchet still i tried everything i could put my foot on the tire pulled it in the driveway i went as tight as i could still wasn't enough so that's when i put the handle on it went almost another half turn I feel like if I go any more of that aluminum bolt or whatever that is, not aluminum obviously, but it was stretching. So we'll leave it there. Worst comes to worst, I'm gonna have to figure out welding on some plates or something that'll fit better. But uh, there we go. So like I said, to fix this curve, we're gonna have to bring this forward half an inch or an inch, which only way to do that is with uh, longer radius arms. So that's a future me thing, but this side looks a lot worse than the other side for that coil. Well, they're about the same, I guess. But rides good though on the highway. It rides the same as factory, to be honest. Especially with these uh, bigger tires, like with the the 22s and 37s, not like a 24. Ride smooth. It's all good that way. Okay, Walt. Well, now let's go get some shots of it um, sitting level now. Level. And we're back. Um, so yeah, let's get some walk around of the uh, leveling the rear and just how it all turned out, how it leveled out. Um, it rides great. I got it so the front end doesn't click anymore, doesn't do anything like that. I ended up tightening up the um, track bar bolt, tight as I can go, as you saw in that video. Um, didn't click, and I'm sure if I did some like off-roading, it might, you know, flex a little bit or click here, but when I was wrenching on that thing, I was almost moving the whole bracket, the track bar bracket. And at that point, like maybe you just get a stronger one. Maybe that's where Rough Country kind of drops the ball, is making it just strong enough for like, excuse me, for the six inch lift or for like the skinnier tires and all big offsets, which is, I don't know. I don't know if that counts or not, but anyway, let's take a look here. I've it um, now sitting level. 
So as you can see here, she's pretty much level. I did bring a tape measure so we can measure, but she's looking pretty good. Better than having a saggy butt or like, uh, what, North Carolina lean or South Carolina lean. I don't know what you guys call it. Um, squatting dog. But she's level, which is perfect, is what I wanted. I might have to put a two inch shim on the um, carrier bearing. I do have a little vibration just to begin with, and then it goes away. So you're supposed to have, uh, there's, a, there's an equation, but a two inch is what for an eight inch lift. So quarter inch for every inch of lift, I think the math is, but anyway, I digress. I, I think it only came with like one for a six inch. So that would be like an inch and a half or inch three quarters. So, but yeah, she looks good now. She looks beefy, nice and level. Let's get the tape measure out here and we'll measure, uh, we'll try to measure the wheel wells as much as we can with the offset. Makes it tricky, of course. So, what do you guys see there on the back? Hard to see, but 49-ish maybe? I'll have to take a look with it down. Uh, let's say 49 let's do the front 49 so i think we're within a quarter inch half an inch anyway like i said it's so hard to tell with the offsets to really put on the wheel well but we gained quite a bit you can tell here i'm 6'1 and i'm at the top of my mirror so whew, she's she's tall she's big boy if it's in my garage still, it's more the width I have an issue with. I have like an inch and a half space in between the two front wheels when they come in, or rear, I guess. But yeah, she's looking good. The, uh, like I said, to fix the spring, I'm gonna have to get longer radius arms. Obviously we talked about that. That'll be a next year thing, or if something comes up on Facebook, it's a good deal, I'll pop something on there. But for now, a lot of guys ride like this. Um, I had a guy with a 10 inch lifted Ram one, uh, one ton, eight inch lifted two inch leveling kit it worked so i still have to powder coat my front and rear drive shafts that'll be it just kind of cut touch-ups here and there but overall she's uh, done pretty much underneath for now going forward i just still have some small things to do so keeping so keep uh subscribe if you uh, haven't subscribed yet and like this video if you haven't yet just every little thing goes a long way with the channel as you guys know i hate being those guys like ah subscribe subscribe like 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 you know it just if you like it cool guys like it please it helps but i got some small things coming for it still it's not done there'll be more done to it for out west chuck fest which is coming up in end of july ish 26 i think it is so if you guys are going to that hope to see you there come uh come check out the rig rocket here i'm gonna start calling it the rig rocket because we're in alberta um and then uh yeah you can come pick it apart but i still have some things to do to her so she's getting there though she's looking really good and also with those radius arms when i get longer ones on it'll move the wheel forward which will help me with the rubbing so it's kind of a twofer right bring it forward with the rubbing and then straighten out those springs but um adhd there distraction okay guys well thanks for following along catch you in the next one